In every story, villains are like the spice that adds flavor and excitement. They're not just bad guys, they're essential ingredients that make a plot interesting. This video explores why Homelander is a fantastic and terrifying villain, bringing out the best in our heroes, creating conflict, and making the whole watching experience richer. Now, I could sit here and talk about how the boys redefined the whole superhero movie genre, but that's already been spoken about more than enough by now. Instead, I want to focus on just one character in particular, the villain who has quite literally broken the internet numerous times with with memes made about him. Love or hate this character, you can't deny that he is written in such an intriguing way that you either want to shout at the TV screen with how much you hate him or just sit stunned with how ruthless his character is. Which, credit to Anthony Starr, the actor who portrays Homelander, he's so incredible at portraying the character of Homelander and being so incredibly good at the role that this is a character I believe could exist in our world if the wrong person got the same power set as Homelander. This video will also contain spoilers for season 1, 2 and 3 of the boys as well as NV and the boys diabolical, so proceed with caution. Now, before we talk about present Homelander, the Homelander we know today, I want to delve into his past so we can see why he became the way he is today. We get a couple of flashbacks to Homelander's childhood in the main show, but the Boys Diabolical episode 8, titled 1 plus 1 equals 2, is where we really get an idea of Homelander's past. When he's up on stage talking about his past, he tells the audience that he had a normal childhood, growing up, playing sports like baseball, only for the viewer to see flashbacks of a not-so-normal childhood. Flashbacks of Homelander being put through torturous experiments and training him from a very early age to become the strongest he could be. But through these torturous and abusive methods, they justified as training, not teaching him sympathy or care, a reasons why he is the way he is today. And I find it all that more terrifying when you have a villain who has been through trauma and has scrambled their head through these traumatic events. Granted, Homelander didn't really have much of a choice as from birth, he was raised in a lab and forced to go through all these traumatic events. But it only adds to how scary he is later on as an adult because you know from the flashbacks what he was capable of as a kid. Later on in the same episode, we see Homelander's first mission, teamed up with no other than Black Noir. They were tasked with saving some hostages who had been taken captive in a chemical plant. Despite Vought warning Homelander not to engage until Black Noir was in position, Homelander let his jealousy get the best of him, something that I will touch on later, and engages without backup, believing that Black Noir would only steal the spotlight from him. This would prove to be a massive mistake as not only does it go completely sideways, but Homelander underestimates his own power and quite literally acts accidentally rips a woman's jaw off. Excuse me? Man, this show is brutal. Of course, in this time as well, Black Noir arrives and Homelander, worried that word would get out, tries to kill Black Noir, which would lead to a massive explosion. Amongst the fire and rubble, the last survivor is inching towards an escape. They're almost there when Black Noir appears and the viewer is tricked into thinking that Black Noir is going to save the last survivor from Homelander. Only for Black Noir to kill the last survivor, Homelander, shocked by this, seeks an explanation and quickly learns that Black Noir is all too familiar with collateral damage, with him serving as a hero for quite some time. This is where we can really see Homelander change into the Homelander we know today. At the beginning of the episode, he is hopeful and genuine, and by the end, he's already come to terms that it's okay for people to die, and then lie about it to the press. All of this stems from his childhood. Growing up in a lab, he was never shown real sympathy, how to treat people with care, but most importantly, they made him too strong. Vought got their wish, with Homelander being one of the strongest characters in the boys' universe, but in doing so, never taught him how to control that power, and because of it, every person who was meant to be saved was killed on Homelander's first mission. If we then cut to season one of the boys, we see an entirely different Homelander, one who is selfish and knows full well that he has the power to get away with whatever he wants. I mean, him taking advantage of Becca Butcher is just one of the many examples of this. We also see how easily he can get away with anything, with Vought covering up his malicious violence. I mean, just take the plane scene with Maeve. Despite Maeve wanting to try and save the plane full of passengers, Homelander is so quick to come to the conclusion of just leaving everyone to die because he knows that Vought will cover it up and his reputation as a superhero will remain intact. And unlike Maeve, who will feel incredibly guilty afterwards, Homelander simply doesn't feel any of that guilt, instead using the accident on the news as a way to further Vought's goals as a business. Time and time again throughout the show, we see that Homelander only wishes to be on top. He doesn't like competition or feeling like he's lesser than anyone. Eventually, he gets that wish with Stan Edgar being forced to leave Vought because of Victoria Newman and making charges against Stan Edgar instead of Homelander, which only furthers Homelander's goals.
Now, before I mentioned about Homelander's jealousy and how he loves the attention, back in episode 8 of The Boys Diabolical, I mentioned how Black Noir and Homelander teamed up, and Homelander hated this. He felt as if Black Noir was going to completely take the spotlight from him, being number one. And this is the reason why he's so quick to attack Black Noir, his paranoia in believing that Black Noir was ready to turn on him immediately. This is why later on, Black Noir and Homelander get on so well when we see them in season 1 and 2 of The Boys, because Black Noir is fine with letting Homelander stay on top, and because Homelander no longer feels feels threatened by Black Noir. He sees him as an ally rather than an enemy. In fact, we see many examples throughout the show of Homelander being the dominant figure of the Seven, and anyone on the team who steps out of line, Homelander threatens making an example of that person and making everyone else on the team feel on edge and fearful. I mean, just look at the character's expressions when Homelander walks into the room. They hold their breath as to not say the wrong thing or take Homelander off in any way. I think this also speaks volumes about the uncertainty with Homelander. You'll never know if he'll hurt someone or not when he gets ticked off. There there is many examples throughout the show where Homelander is all smiles only for his actions to be that of malicious intent. There is this uncertainty of everything that Homelander does and it's moments like these sprinkled throughout the show that makes Homelander truly scary because everyone knows that he holds the most power. He could kill pretty much everyone if he chose to and it's the guessing game of whether or not he will hurt someone he's in the same room with. Since we're on the topic of jealousy and attention as well, I feel it's only right to bring up the many scenes where Homelander's popularity is threatened. All through season 1 and 2, Homelander's reputation is threatened, and you can see just how much he cares about it. Take the scene where Homelander confronts Stan Edgar. Homelander walks into Edgar's office, confident that he is the most valuable asset to Vought, and if he chose to walk away from the company, they would be nothing without him. However, Stan Edgar puts Homelander in his place by telling him the truth, that Homelander isn't needed. The only thing that Vought needs is the confidential formula to Compound V to continue making more superheroes so that they can keep advertising their company. You can see Homelander slowly growing more angrier through this scene. His position in the company is threatened and the attention he wants from Edgar he isn't receiving, because unlike the rest of Homelander's fans who will blindly love him, Stan Edgar is someone who only cares for the Vought company, and Homelander's attempt at proving Stan Edgar that he is important to the company is quickly shot down, which only pushes Homelander's buttons. And again, this is just another example of not knowing if Homelander will just kill Stan Edgar then and there. I mean, he doesn't kill him, but in the moment you've seen what Homelander is capable of and you never truly know what his next move is. If you also see the early stages of Stormfront and Homelander's relationship, he is so threatened by Stormfront because she actually has the power to take Homelander's reputation. And technically does in season 3 when everyone finds out who Stormfront really is, which so negatively affects Homelander that it drives him to the conclusion that if he ever stopped being loved by people, then he would have nothing to lose and therefore would kill everyone who doesn't support him, which reveals Homelander's new motives. When it comes to the end of season 2 and season 3 of the boys, we can see that Homelander still cares about his reputation, but not as much. And that's because he finds a new motive, which is being a father to his son Ryan. Knowing that he never had a father figure in his life, other than a bunch of scientists, he wants to nurture Ryan and teach him how to use his powers, so his son won't have to go through the same thing he did when growing up with these incredible powers, which is confusion. Homelander was not taught a lot of things when it comes to controlling his power. He was only taught how to become the strongest, so he wants to teach Ryan Ryan in a more fatherly way, show him care and sympathy, so that Ryan may be better than he ever was. Now, Homelander isn't perfect at being a dad. I mean, he literally pushed his son off a roof to try and teach him how to fly, which granted probably isn't the best way to go about teaching, but we can see over time Homelander become more patient with Ryan, still trying to teach him how to use his powers but in a more patient way, which is something that Stormfront suggested to him. For a moment in the show, just a moment, Stormfront convinces Homelander to take a more sympathetic approach when it comes to teaching his son how to use his powers, knowing that they're arguably two of the most powerful characters in the boys universe and therefore can understand each other better and the attention that comes with that. When we cut to season 3 of the boys, this is where things get heated because Homelander comes to the realisation that Soldier Boy is his father and Ryan's grandfather. Homelander is clearly affected by this news knowing that he never had a father figure in his life and so he tries to reach out to Soldier Boy. Both him and Ryan try to convince Soldier Boy to join them and live as a proper family. Of course, Soldier Boy doesn't take the offer and wants to to kill Homelander, but incidentally hurts Ryan in the process. And this is where Homelander gets scary. The second Soldier Boy laid his hands on
friends on Homelander's son, he lost it. Even teaming up with Butcher briefly just to fight Soldier Boy. We can see in this moment that Homelander was absolutely not going to let that slide. This then cuts to the scene at the end of season three, where someone throws a can at Ryan and Homelander kills the guy right in front of everyone. Season one, Homelander wouldn't dare to do this in public as he was worried about his reputation, but his son now comes first and he kills the guy without hesitation to defend his son. And to Homelander's shock, people actually cheer him on for defending his son. And the smile that he gives at the end solidifies why Homelander going into season four is going to be terrifying because he now doesn't care about lasering people in public. If someone even looks at him the wrong way, he won't hesitate to hurt them because he now knows he'll have people supporting his choices. I mean, of course, there are still going to be consequences to his actions with a few people hating Homelander, but as long as he has a supporting crowd and his son, he's now not afraid to take lives in public. And who's going to stop him? Time and time again, we're shown that almost no one can stand up to Homelander. Now, I do have a bit of a theory on who could potentially take Homelander down in the future, as in Gen V was shown that Marie can control blood, and not just her own blood, but other people's blood as well. And I think that eventually she could become strong enough to destroy Homelander. But for right now, we know that she's been taken prisoner as well as her friends. We could hopefully see the boys coming to break them out and leading to a massive team up of superpowered individuals, all with the mission to take Homelander down. However, even if Homelander is taken down, I believe Ryan could end up just taking Homelander's spot. And because Butcher wouldn't want to kill Ryan with Ryan being Becca's son, the boys may end up having a more underlying issue on their hands, as ultimately Homelander is currently mentoring Ryan and will continue to in season four. And it obviously goes without saying, but the more time Ryan spends with Homelander, the more time Ryan will pick up Homelander's beliefs and could even become more powerful than Homelander. If he sees everything that Homelander does, he may think that it's okay to kill someone if they treat him badly. And of course, this will create conflict again. I appreciate you watching this video. I love the boys and I'm so excited for season four. From the trailer, it looks like the show's really going to be dialed up to 11. And I honestly think that no one is safe going into season four. But that's all I have time for today, Internet Stranger. If you want to check out another video from me, then click on this video next. And if I don't see you again, then best of luck with everything.